an engineer, um, got brought in by Shells to run the site to completion. There's 40 units next door. We stood now will be a demolition in about eight months' time for a bit of nine in this unit. So um, we'll go out on site because it's a lot easier to explain how they yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. six or seven foot of um, multiple crops from over the years. You know, a lot of vegetation which we stripped away, stacked there at the side for uh, processing and reuse later. Um, we removed the topsoil underneath the plots, stacked that to the side for later reuse. The material that's gone in there is for a piling platform to support the weight of the rigs on there and the cranes <coughs> and that will be piled from the 6th of September the mobilising to site so we're only basically stripping away what we need to to, to sort of reduce cost uh, bring in recycled material which will be later used to raise the levels for the road that you can see going sweeping round up the site so there's five plots along here and then a favour five on just this side of that stockpile. We'll take a walk, walk up and down there. Well, what about right in the beginning? Do you understand the people who are inside the ground? Sorry? Yeah, it's a big site. Massive. Basically, you have a site for site there. So, you know what to read. But beneath this, drop out a metre of the tidal deposit. And then there's a band between two and five metres thick of uh, blue clay, which is incredibly soft, hence the piling. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what's, what's, the piling, what's the piling for? Is it all the foundations? Yes. Well? Yeah, to keep the area tidy, so the trucks coming in and out have got some that's clean to yeah, uh, yeah. drive on. And then on there, so you have a 200 slab across the garage, and it comes down and forms part of a strip footing. So that sort of spreads the weight oh. across the entire area. Whereas on the house, you've only got strip footings, so it's 600 wide, and then the weight of the house pushing down. Right. So they're supported on, on the uh, piles. Right. Yeah. So how, how many houses will be on here in total? From here, well, 40. Outside. And from the, just behind the silos there, there's a further nine. Right. Which is a separate site. I'll, yeah, I'll right. talk you through that when we go inside. So yeah. is there an issue then, when you're putting in a new development, that kind of number, but the local sewage, yeah. do they ever come back and say, whoa, we can't take that, that's too much? Well, like, exactly it's funny like that. you should say yeah. that. Because, um, here they've got a pressurised sewer, so it gets vacuumed out, all these plots here. Okay. Two plots go into one manual. It's all it's all a level capacity, is it? Yeah. Is it? Right. And that was designed for that estate, well, for the first day, that's what it was designed for. Then they bolted these on, yeah. then we asked to go in there, and they said no. So now, we're having a new sewer going through the allotments just here, yeah. onto the main network. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that's going to be a, a big operation, but that's angling water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it should. So in no doubt of doing it a really good deal. <laughs> really cheaply. Well, that's their problem <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we, that's, we yeah. pay an infrastructure charge, I believe it's about £500 per property. Right. Um, and because they've got nothing to connect onto, that's their issue. Oh, right. Yeah. So we've, we take the drainage as far as um, it was supposed to go into the road, just, just out there. Um, because it can't handle it, way. now angling water, I've got to bring. Uh, a vacuum system across the allotments there yeah. to meet our network over here. But is there ever a scenario where the development is so big, even yeah. connected to the main system, yeah. it, it's, it's too big, they have to do something completely different? Uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah. That's um, There's two separate parts to that. There's 
the infrastructure, which is the responsibility of the local provider, which here is Angling Water and Black Sluice Gate. So they have to supply us something yeah. that we can connect onto. Yeah. Uh, and it just so happens here, it's a specialist contractor um, who holds the patent for this system. Right. So we'll be doing all the drainage this side, except except for the vacuum system. Uh -huh. We'll put all the pots in there yeah, yeah. where it goes to, yeah. and from there there'll be a fusion welded uh, pressure line right. that they install that will take us from the road here across uh, where the attenuation is here, and then through the allotment to the main road. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good one, that. It's holding yeah. us up at the minute. It is. Okay. What about um, utilities, uh, utilities, electricity? How, how's, how's that going with connections? And uh, we need a substation just over there where the blue tumbag station in there. We're, we're waiting on calcs from our uh, mechanical electrical designers. Um, and then we'll just be building a substation there. And no gas, I guess. No gas, no. Gas, no. Yeah. no, there is gas in the area. There is a large um, high pressure main in the field next door. Um, and this is a gas. Yeah. yeah, it surprised me that as well yeah. because they're bringing the Viking Link over this way, right. um, which is a few miles up there. And that'll, that will be bringing in but gas. I suppose when they put those up, there wasn't such a pressure on moving to electric. It was no. only just starting, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So the cost for a substation, that's yeah. wholly on the developer, is it? Or there's some yeah. kind of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what the costs are yet, but there's a provisional sum for, is it 80,000? Yeah. yeah. 80,000, yeah. It's going to be between like 60 and 80, mm. I think, yeah. yeah. But um, the MEP designer, I've worked with him quite a bit, and he's really good at, you know, really tuning everything on there to give you exactly what you need and no more. Uh -huh. So he, he does his job quite well, Rob. I've got permission for a bungalow in Peterborough and just have the power to that. 16 grand. <laughs> yeah. Bungalow, yeah. 16 grand. Just a power connection. Wow. Okay. How far away from the road is that? It's usually about a thousand pound a metre. Yeah, it's uh, well, say about 40 metres. But then there's a main road yeah. and they've got tapping the power across the road. So yeah. they've got to literally close the roads on the bus route. Close the road for two days, <laughs> dig down. Nice and easy. It's, yeah. it's, it's as bad yeah. as it could be yeah. for a simple connection. Yeah. yeah. Well, over here we had uh, temporary water installed <coughs> on, what was it, two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was four months ago. Yeah. And they basically already, because it's a fairly recent estate over there, they've already got ducks in there to go either side of the road. So they basically dig up the pavement that side, this side, pull the pipe through, connect it up there, and we brought the pipe from the building over to the RS fence in there, so they just connect it up there. Uh, it's a lot easier now. Got the uh, mortar silos there at higher strength concrete, so we're all ready to go really. Got bricks coming uh, on the 13th of September, yeah. and it blocks on the 14th. Sorry, so that's to make the foundations? Oh. Yeah, no, no, that is for the mortar, for the brickwork. Right, for the brickwork. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, one's for below ground and the other one's for, right. well, up to DPT and then yeah. from there we go with a coloured mortar. Right. And the bricks we have to order the whole lot in one go. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't have to have to wait at least a year. Go on then, how many bricks? Half a million. A lot. Yeah. 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 Special colour bricks or something to get them all? Two different colours. I'll show you when you go inside. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so when you bought this property, um, Chas, uh, did you, I mean, did you get it with planning permission or did you it, buy it and then you did No, it had outline planning. Right. Okay. Yeah. And is that fairly easy to get? Or well, outline planning. No, I mean, yeah, if you, yeah, well, outline planning, I mean, but full planning. Uh, once, you've got, once you've got outline planning, it, it's easier. Yeah. If you don't have outline planning, it can be very difficult. Yeah. 
But the outline planning must have cost a fortune anyway. I have no idea. No? Yeah, because oh, you bought it without. I, I bought it with outline right, planning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then the full planning, if you don't mind me asking, for a project this size. That cost us seventy-five grand. Yeah. yeah. So what happens were, from yeah. from the outline planning? Yeah. Basically, an architect and a, a, and a client will put together a scheme and yeah. say, is this acceptable? And they'll say, yes, it is. In but. principle. And in then principle. it'll give you, a, they'll have a load of items on there that say, oh, we might need this. And you've got to put a park on there. And yeah. then when Shaz appointed Daniel from Funk Architecture, he deals with all those questions on there. And the civil engineer looks at the drainage to make something work. So you work with all the uh, local authorities, highways, um, the power networks, water, everybody gets a say in it. Um, ecology, hydrology, yeah. you know, all, all the consultants, they all offer um, suggestions that you have to work with. Yeah. And you, you sort of balance a solution. So 70 odd grand for the full planning, Yep. And how many units is it? 40. 40. There, is, there is a lot more behind the scenes, so pre-construction. You know, the, yeah. the bulk of the consultancy costs are there. Um, and then once you get going, then basically you build it, and they all sign off at the end. Yeah. Various inspections. So there's a lot more this side in pre-construction than there is sort of doing it. You can burn a lot of cash to on you very quickly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you've got you've got to burn it though, otherwise you yeah. make a mistake down the line and it's yeah. oh dear. I won't say spend it carefully. Yeah. Spend it carefully is the way. Any yeah. any other spend it. At this yeah. stage, you know, you come across great yeah. crested moves to take in. No, oh, no. Yeah. no there, there was quite a lot of input from the ecology. Right. Um, there weren't really much in the area of right no. that. There's no rare shrew or no. something or owl no. nesting no, no. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Luckily not. No. <laughs> well, the more work you put into sort of before the purchase, um, the easier it will be mm. when you're on the site. So yeah. you sort of, um, with all your consultants, you find out what the pitfalls are before you step into it. So, you know, part of my job is to ring people where we're getting this stuff from, how quick can they get it here, if not, come up with a plan B. So everything's in place down there, been working hard for the last few weeks, making sure that we get everything when we need it at the right price. So when do you expect, so you've still got still the, quite a bit of groundworks to do? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when does the actual physical building start? Because obviously the weather will deteriorate yeah. very quickly. And well, because um, we're on timber frame here, we can have that up in a week. So um, they've got on the programme two weeks per unit. However, we used to install many years ago. Um, we know you can have, you can have them up inside of a week, including the roof. All right, so they are timber, they're fully timber units. Yeah, you are. Once you, um, obviously, once you're above the ground, you know. You, you yeah, can, you get your piles in there, yeah. put a, a reinforced steel right. cage in there, pour concrete, three courses of block, yeah. and then beam and block floor. Yeah. One more course of block on there, then you put a salt plate all the way round, mm -hmm. which is uh, just a timber 4x2 yeah. on there. And then on top of that goes your timber panels. So they just basically lift and nail together, carry on going up. And those in terms of, obviously it's a new build, so it'll have all the energy performance and stuff, yeah. but mortgageability is perfect for those. Yeah, yeah, there's no yeah. problem there. There's yeah. a few lenders who might not be interested, yeah. but 95% are okay yeah. with it. They're, but you they're can very well them. designed. Once you've done the legwork below, yeah, yeah, they're, That's they're it, yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. You, you've yeah. got a speed there. That's yeah. right. Cost is very similar to standard. Right. So why did you go for that? Just the speed. Just the speed. Yeah. 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 So you can. Yeah. 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 And their longevity. Sorry. You know they're going to last. You know. Yeah. The HMR I've done is a 120 year old property. You know, and it's yeah. still fairly. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly good, Nick. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be. Are these likely to be uh, 
oh, yeah, around yeah, in yeah, our yeah, world yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. 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 They've got yeah. a bit cladding, haven't they, as well? So yeah. Because yeah. 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 the structure is the timber, it's yeah. the brick is there just as a rain screen. Right. That's all, it's all insulated um, and air tightness membrane is on the timber. I see. So that's your building envelope and then the bricks there just, just make a it look better. Yeah. 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 Cheers, guys. Yeah.